bum, bum, bum. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites, another one bites, another case started by the dust. Another game found, another game found, another game found is down. So many campaigns going all the time, I don't know what to do. That's why, that's why I talk to you. What's up? It's one of those weeks. Did you notice? Only one person in the comment section noticed it last week, or at least called me out on it. I totally forgot to include Legend Academy of the ones that launched last week. So, whoops, we're going to start off with that one this week. But, um, otherwise, that's all I got. I don't know. Just one of those weeks. Ready to get on, getting on, and ready to just kind of, uh, you know, another week in August, right? Man, I can't believe summer is almost over. That is crazy. We're approaching the year deadline. I'm still trying to come up with some crazy ideas. I've got a few in mind. Maybe a puzzle search giveaway sort of thing as well. Not really a puzzle search, but, you know, I'm going to make you work for it if I'm going to give you something. Eh, apart from that, we'll see. Build a throne of games behind me. Sit on that instead of this uh, crickety old computer chair. I don't know. Something to spice it up here towards the one-year anniversary. That's all I got. Let's do this. What's new this week? So like I said, I screwed up Legend Academy. We're going to talk about it first from El Dorado Games. Uh, almost three times its funding goal. It is, well, as the quotes say, it appears to be a lot of fun. Again, I, I love GameFound and I hate GameFound at the same time. I don't care about the pledge up here, but you start out with the rewards. Like, the rewards are right at the top. Here, here, spend all your money. But I like the fact that they only really have one pledge level. That's kind of nice. Now, the question that I have in a game like this is, is this is, I believe it's adventure-driven, these tales, these story expansions, uh, scenarios, where you play through two of them per game. As you're upgrading your character from classic fables and uh, myth lore and everything like that. Folklore, myths, I just combined them there. Did a little legism there. But my, my concern when I see this, and this is sort of what El Dorado did last time, which made me hesitant on Age of Atlantis, even though I really, really like that side of things, is that a free expansion where you're getting to choose the character. Like, I have to think that they have some very, very specific ideas already in mind for abilities or for characters, and that you're not just going to, like, totally freeball it afterwards. Because otherwise that worries me in terms of balance, in terms of like Blood Rage expansions, you know, Kickstarter exclusive, those guys where they were just, you know, eh, eh, they're great, but eh, they don't fit in as, nearly as well. So again, I, I don't know. This is a little bit more worker placement with deck building. Obviously they have their own unique skill tree with all of these legends and it's all about comboing from that side of things. I, I just don't know. I haven't watched a whole lot of the gameplay yet in terms of these upgrades and the skill trees and things like that. So I don't really know if this is something I would like or if this is something that I used to think that I would like. And that's the sort of differentiation here in terms of what that is. And again, you know, if you're playing two of these, I mean, yeah, there's 10. Are they going to be a little samey? How different are they? Um, I think the price point is fine. I think the price point is probably really good, actually. And... I don't care about the miniatures. I think the miniatures, again, I could go without in a game like this. But the um, tales that you're getting, again, are fine. There's a whole lot of quotes from, you know, tabletop playtesters, and there's board game codes and quackalopes and MVMs. So I just I just don't know. I, I'm really kind of back and forth on it from that side of things. So it's just a, a weird dynamic from that side of things for me. In terms of whether or not this is going to be good. I, I wish there was just some mechanic on actual... Like, it says train your legend. It says craft your deck. It says assemble your team. But I just don't know how those dynamics actually work. Like, I, I'm going to have to watch a video. Because I can't get enough information from the page itself. And that is not something I really like to see on the page in the first place. But we'll see where it goes. I mean, obviously it's a su success. I don't think it's at anywhere near the funding goal of Age of Atlantis, which I think was like two or 300,000. But again, this still has 19 days left, so it could easily reach that as well. But that is Legend Academy. You know what? Screw it. 
I will just stay over here with Gamefound because otherwise I'll forget about it like I did last week. I'll screw up and do another Legism. Let's go straight to Masters of the Universe Fields of Eternia. Now, this is another huge surprise to me. This has 500 freaking thousand euros. Holy hyperspace Kraken, Batman, right? It's only going to be a two-week campaign, and you're in this free little Orco in the first 40 hours, so maybe that's part of it? This is the Masters of Eternia, or Masters of Universe, that is only going to be available in Europe. The Simon one is supposedly going to be coming out in September, and that is for, like, North America. And they're doing a lot with this, and I was looking over this page after it launched like area control, army, quests, you know, resource gathering, resource collection, um, upgrades and abilities, just like everything under the sun. And you're controlling up to 15 units on the board and there's expansions with different bad guys and you're drafting three heroes or villains per team. So I just, there's so much going on. I go, you know, this sounds good, but it just sounds like there's, it's a mash of all the mechanisms you can think of, and that scares me at the same time, too. Now, this whole pledge level thing is a whole other quandary. United Kingdom is kind of, sounds like they're getting hosed, if I'm looking at this correctly, that they don't get the VAT included, and I'm guessing VAT is going to be more than 30 euros. I don't really know what VAT runs nowadays. You guys over in Europe that are, are commenting all the time on this page, tell me what this runs for something like this, because I have no idea. It makes me, just off the top of my head, think it's going to be more expensive, but are you actually getting a better deal? I don't know. I just don't know. And, and the base pledge is available. Um, again, I don't I don't really understand that. Now, the, just the collector's pledge, you're getting the two expansions along with it. So, two expansions, each expansion is 40 euros each. That is a ton of money. I don't think that's worth it right now, unless you're adding specific stuff to the expansions. Now they're doing the stretch goals as well as the daily unlocks, like I guessed last week based on these images. And again, great, awesome. But I, I don't know about the value. I just don't know. There's the one special stretch goal right here that they've revealed that you get a dice tower of Castle Grayskull at 800,000 euros, which is fine. And which is really also kind of weird here that you can get an additional copy of the stretch goals. Like I haven't really seen that before. Have you guys seen that before? Is that just me? But, okay, I mean, you have six heroes, you have six villains, and then you're drafting three of them. So, it says it plays one to six, so I'm not really sure. That's only four people total, and that doesn't leave you any uh, room to not have characters drafted, even with the four people. So, I'm guessing with some of these expansions down here um, that they talk about, if we'll get past the, a few of the videos. And, again, there's not many videos. Like, this is a review from King of Average, and that's about the only thing. Uh, at least in English, there's like unboxings and then there's not really a whole lot else. Uh, how to play right here. That's it, pretty much. So again, I'm surprised. And again, this Snake Man expansion doesn't have six heroes, doesn't have a whole lot extra. I mean, it has six villains again, doesn't have heroes. So are you then just increasing your hero count that you can play with? Uh, same thing with this. You have six more villains. So I'm guessing I would think that almost all of these daily unlocks are going to be heroes. Am, am I right in thinking of that? Because look at, there's like 14 of them. That would almost give you the full balance of, you know, an extra 12 in the expansions for villains and 14 for heroes. Or maybe one's a villain and you have 13 and 13. I, I don't know. I, I This seems, and if that's the case, well, man, that's just, I don't know. That's just interesting. Two extra expansions, I guess you could make it as at retail if you did those stretch goals package that way then so i guess i understand it but look at this i mean strategy gearing up your characters exploration you're going to get events storyline quests plots you're going to have interactions with npcs you're going to have battles you're going to have glory victory points it's just all over the place and so i don't know it makes me a little bit worried from that side of things you definitely have to watch very closely the gameplay and the, the problem is there's only like really two videos there's king of averages review which he doesn't tend to do playthroughs on his review but there is the actual how to play too so the how to play might be more useful as well just so you can get a, a feeling of things and i think there's a rule book on here somewhere uh i don't really remember actually let's see maybe not either way i'd hope for a rule book if the videos are not as in deep as i would hope but um yeah that's masters of the universe fields of eternia from archon studios we'll kind of see where this goes i mean it's raising a lot more money than i expected initially off the front but we'll see if it stagnates or if this is the 48 hour bonus that people are getting in on or where things kind of settle over the next two weeks 
So next up, we have, going back to Kickstarter, Dungeon Degenerates. Now, this is the fourth printing of this game. This is the neon uh, 90s version, dinosaur island colored uh, dungeon crawl, if you will. Uh, it often uses heavy metal miniatures, and so the price point has been relatively high in the past, and it's uh, from a small indie studio, so they don't make a lot of extras, and the cost, I think, just for like the base game at retail is usually somewhere in like the $60, so uh, obviously 100 and almost 50% funded, so it's going to get some good support, and you can see what you're getting here. Exclusive miniatures, and they do this each time, miniatures for just this campaign, just the new stuff, again, 64 bucks for the new stuff, that's a lot. $70. So I was I was wrong. This is even higher than it used to be, I think. $70 for that. And 146 And wow, six copies of that. And then the Mega Bundle gets you all of that stuff. Expansions, expansions, character packs, bundles, dice, all of that. It's a lot of stuff. And that's pretty much everything, I'd say. All in. One of everything. 768 All these miniatures. All these miniatures. Oh, wow. And then Early Bird, $65. Bucks, 100 backers. So that 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 helped. That was 65000 $6,500 right there. So this is just, it's just a different dungeon crawler. And it is dark world fantasy where you're trying to make your way through this. Um, again, fourth edition, all UK and EU orders subject to 21% VAT. So if we go back to the previous campaign, 21% VAT. So yeah, you're actually going to be paying more than UK if my mental math is correct on that. So, or very similar actually, just slightly more. Uh, RPG in a box, uh, there you go. I mean, the aesthetic is definitely either appealing to you right away or it's unappealing. I mean, I don't care about the neon stuff, but the artwork, like the the dark fantasy, the that just doesn't do anything for me. And, and so I've heard mixed feelings on just the gameplay too, like, like solid, but again, unique enough that you're either gonna like it or you're not going to. And here you can get some of the expansion packs, character packs, character packs, dice, lore book, a little, a little bit of everything. Everything that was mentioned in those side ones. So uh, previous Kickstarter, Kickstarter exclusive miniature, Zines. Yeah. I mean, again, and you're seeing these miniatures that they're, you know, four for $27, which isn't bad, but it's, it's pewter. So you're going to pay more for it. Now, again, again, this isn't for everybody. This is definitely different. If you haven't heard of it, it's probably worth checking out if you like dungeon crawlers, but it's different enough that it also may not be of your ilk and you got to be a little bit discerning. So either way, it's funded. It's doing well. Check it out. Next up, we have a mass uh, space crew mining hostile alien planet trying to get the most resources over a third of the way funded already. What else do you need to know? Six pounds in shipping. So we'll see what that means. Um, worker placement, hidden movement, war game with aliens. Okay, so what's the price point on this from Dark Frontier Games? It is 49 US dollars, uh, 42 if you got the early bird. That's not an insignificant price. Now, what's interesting about this one is, and as well as Dungeon Degenerates, why do you have so few? Like, if you want to get this, why don't you just offer enough to get funded? Or is it that big of a discount that you're losing much, much more money on that side of things? If you are, maybe you should have made it 45 and just done like a $4 discount. One, you wouldn't have as you know big a gap here, so you wouldn't have people feel as bad if they're here. But then also, you could do a lot more of them then and get a lot closer to your funding goal rather than just a third of the way done in the first you know day or so. Because now you're going to see that stall, especially as an unknown game as opposed to Dungeon Degenerates, which has a little bit more of a pedigree. So, I mean, you're getting everything. It's basic cubes and dice and again the neon colors kind of kind of weird but i don't mind it actually so early prototype uh each round has seven phases though seven phases is a lot so it, maybe it's not a lot but it sounds like a lot when you talk to me about a game uh round two resource cards choose one distribute the resources um each player plans their own crew movements crews get revealed miners are on the map action cards are played fights combat raid on each other's bases any cards in combat can be played and then return your resources back to your base and repair your wounded crews so a little bit of everything there in terms of videos we have a rule book right there as well i mean definitely need to get some more hands-on interaction with this because this is not going to be my 
type of game whatsoever, I think, from a worker placement side of things. And they say there's no stretch goals, so you're getting high quality stuff to begin with, which I don't mind the transparency. Uh, shipping a low flat rate. Everybody, I now see I'd missed that at the top. I thought that was only EU. So, um, or are they only shipping to EU? Oh no, they are. We're absorbing some of the shipping cost. Ooh, that's risky nowadays, though, right? Would you be a little bit uh, concerned about that if someone says we're going to eat the shipping cost on this for you right now with not knowing when shipping is going to be, especially since they say this game is going to be shipped to you before, well, no, sorry, that's not before, by, you know, less than a year from now. So essentially seven months from now, half a year from now, that's pretty ambitious. So uh, check it out if you're interested. That's a mess. Next up, we have the Rainer Nizia trilogy the three set of games that i talked about last week this is just over 50 percent funded soda smugglers puma fioso and hot lead all three quite a different aspect of game itself so you can take a look at what each of them are uh soda smugglers reminds me of the uh sheriff of nottingham if you will you're smuggling soda though instead of um goods uh puma fioso is your bidding it's a trick taking game but you then uh take the card that won the trick and you slot it into the side and depending on where it goes gets you bonus but you can get knocked down then you can get negatives from that side of things and then hot lead um you are trying to get uh sets essentially but if you get too many different sets uh or, well if you get too many of the same set then the bad guys know that there's a snitch and you can get negative points uh 19 bucks for each okay I mean, this is one of those where if you get all three, are you really saving? I mean, you're, yes, you're saving money, but you do you really need all three? Are you actually interested in all three? And so if you're getting all three and you only like two of them, you're really better off not getting all three. So that's just what, you know, these campaigns tend to do from that side of things. People get suckered into getting, wow, you're going to save a whole bunch of money here. If you get all three of them, you're going to save like nine bucks or eight bucks. And well, just get two of them. You'll save like closer to $20, and then you won't end up with a game that you don't really want in the first place, even though it's a savings. That's a whole another type of FOMO. I actually have a video coming out next week, the beginning of next week, talking about the different types of FOMO. So, spoilers. Uh, tell you how to do the soda smugglers. Okay, we talked about that. Puma Fioso. Again, you're trying to get to the top, keep your head out of the firing line, trick taking, push your luck. And you can see sort of where you're slotting in the hierarchy cards here that I mentioned. Goes through the rules. You know, I like this. I really like this. Give me some of this so I understand how it plays on more gameplays. Like, not just the general, like, nebulous, you're doing this. You're doing worker placement. I, I know what worker placement is. Give me an example. Like, this tells me, okay, what am I doing here? So this page has, like, everything I like to see on it from an explanation standpoint. And yeah, it's a little bit of a longer page, but who cares? Because sometimes you just don't feel like watching a 5, 10 minute video, uh, 25 minute video on the basics of gameplay. Like sometimes I just want a visualization. I'm more of a visual instead of an audio sometimes. So um, hot lead, then again, you're investigating, you're bidding and getting these leads and you're scoring based on what ones you have. So additional points, obviously, like I said, for all five types or if you have three of a kind. But if you get four of a kind, now there you go. You're going to get some negatives. Rule books there. I mean, Hot Lead is the one that really appeals to me the most. The other two don't really do anything for me, but that's okay. To each their own. And upgraded components for an additional 20 bucks as well. So, yeah. Two stretch goals. Okay. That's uh, the Nizia Trilogy. Check it out if you're interested. Next up, we have Flamecraft. Uh, I've talked about this one as well. I knew this was probably going to be the biggest one of the week, apart from like Masters of Eternia. But I still didn't think it was probably going to break, or I thought it was going to end up maybe like 100, 150,000. <laughs> what do I know, right? This is one of those that you just don't have a clue on, though. Because I wouldn't have been surprised if this would have been at like 50,000 right now, or 30,000. And I'm also not terribly surprised at it being 260,000. Because th you just see all of a sudden random weird stuff get totally blown up by backers and projects. And people are definitely digging the aesthetic on this as a... Uh, cutesy uh, dragon uh, shop worker placement style game where the dragons are your resource production side of things instead of the typical trope of destructive. And so I think people are just uh, really being appealed from that side of things. Uh, you're going from shopkeeper to shopkeeper, uh, 
you know, fending them your wares in terms of dragons so that they can uh, do better at more shops. And then you can collect those resources and, you know, build your engine to be the best. And I mean, like I said, the art is very enticing. It has um, plenty of preview videos that you can check out if you want to see uh, very positive, positive things. And there's a standard edition, which if you're going to go for is not worth it whatsoever, even though personally, I prefer the wooden meeples, I think actually in this case, over the deluxe edition. But if you're going to go for a value, as you've heard me say, as I'm sure Board Game Co is going to tell you, Alex over there is going to tell you, you go for the deluxe edition because people will pay for that more on the higher retail. And then the retail edition will probably sell for lower. So, you know, it's a no brainer from that side of things. The deluxe resources. I am again not a fan of paying for the deluxe resources. I find deluxe resources really that it's just not me. Uh, metal coins. Need I say more? Uh, another quote from Hungry Gamer: How to play? Again, I wish there was a little bit more on you know what you were actually doing with some of this stuff. The rule book there though is nice, and I like the fact that they've got the rule book already on the page. And they say you know okay, you're gonna get this. This is exclusive. This is uh, a statue that you're going to get card wise. Uh, so I mean, what the exclusivity and the limited edition stuff is, and it is what it is. It, it just is. You're either going to want to get it here, or you're going to want to wait for retail in terms of you just don't need all the extra stuff. Because again, this is $79, $80 before shipping, and it's a limited run. But like, I think this reminds me very much so of title blades, if you will. Uh, the stuff for Title Blades had no gameplay effect whatsoever. And you're essentially now paying probably more than double for the upgrades. The coins, the trays, the tokens. Are you okay with paying double? Now, if you love this game, if you look at this game and you go, this is everything I want out of a work of placement. I have no doubt that this is going to be a forever game for me. Well, yeah, obviously you get that. But otherwise, I mean... If you think from a retail side of things that this could be $30 and you can get free shipping. Now, again, I hate qualifying at that, but let's just assume um, shipping is six bucks. So 36 bucks versus 79 plus shipping. I'm going to guess down here at the bottom is probably going to run you 15 to 20. So you're talking almost a hundred dollars versus $36. So you're talking literally almost a third of the price for no difference in gameplay and just deluxifications for 60 to $70, that's not insignificant. You know, if you want to, everyone talks about, side rant here, everyone talks about the price of Iridia being massive. You're paying 60 extra dollars for all of the upgrade stuff here. Not content, not plastic, but just upgrades and components. I mean, yes, you can argue the whole standees versus miniatures things. Miniatures are the same way, but this is just, you know, like the upgraded components too. And so that's a lot to me. Like, I, I think this is cool too, but I just, you know, I think of the two or three other games I could buy with this as well. Or the other big game that I could buy that's going to appeal to me more instead of just going for the aesthetic side of things. The bread plushy, bread dragon plushy, Dragon Coaster, they're selling a bunch of the other uh, other stuff if you want. I mean, yeah, it's cool. I like the art. There's, I think this is probably going to be a solid game. You don't see that many people putting that many positive quotes out there, although you do. But I would hope that it's going to be like the ceiling, maybe not as high as some of the other games, but I don't think the basement is as low as many other games out there as well. Bunch of stretch goals that they've already hit that you're getting there. And you'll notice that like none of those are marked with those little uh, icons that we saw up top. So again, just something to of note. Not a big deal, but there you go. A uh, couple gameplays, retailers. So here's shipping. So twelve dollars, fourteen dollars for that. It's not bad, but if you're anywhere else in one of these zones, it's a lot more. Well, that was a fun little jaunt in the middle of filming here. Uh, we lost power. That was awesome. Been without power now for about twenty-four hours. Super awesome. Good thing you have a generator. That is why, because we have lost power literally probably like. 10 or 12 times since we have this house. Anyway, this is Wicked and Wise, an asymmetric trick-taking team game for two to six players, already well over 100% funded. Let's check it out. So you are taking on either the role of a dragon or a mouse. Both are said asymmetric powers of what you're going to be doing in this trick-taking game. 
Now you're either using the dragons that are playing a trick taking game or you're the mouse that's allied with that dragon to help it manipulate how the game is actually played. It's a little bit more than just trick taking though because they say there are treasures, there's goals, there's little things like that along the way that you're going to be able to manipulate as the mouse especially because you want to end up with the most gold and depending on how you can do that depends on how easy it will be at the end in the first place. So what else is in there? Okay, I mean, the art is beautiful. Um, I'm going to probably remind me on this one just because I like trick-taking games, but it's one of those things where trick-taking games are something I like, but do not hit the table as easily as I would like from that side of things. Otherwise, I would probably be backing this at this point. Um, a little bit of how to play, a little bit of the overview. They tell you about a little bit of trick-taking in general. So then they talk about, you know, um, best duo since Mousetrap. So what are you doing in the actual game? Okay, you're drawing your cards, you're choosing your goals secretly, then you're revealing them. Now you can choose more than one goal in a round, but if you don't achieve them, you're going to lose coins instead of gaining them. So not only can you choose to go for your goals, but you can also, obviously, as I take that, you can choose to go after the other person's goals to try and prevent them from achieving them, which has a double effect then. Five tricks. Leading dragon player plays the first card. Everyone matches lead suit like usual. Mice players have the ability to activate their uh, ability on their played cards, though. And you're going back and forth. Abilities allow them to swap cards, draw cards, gain coins, everything else into the sun. So highest trick or trump wins it. And then it's just about the manipulation that goes along with it. So evaluate your goals before dealing. Discard any remaining cards. Mouse cards, though, are kept in their hands and they can also pass them to the dragon now a two-player version i always worry about two-player versions in a game that is not meant to be a two-player game but we'll see um there you go a couple reviews couple videos or previews i mean lots of previews reward levels i mean it's a good price 25 bucks yeah uh if you want to play mat i don't really need a play mat for a trick taker uh but so 25 dollars. i mean yeah i'll have to give this one a second look when it gets closer but there you go wicked and wise Next is Adver City, which I talked about last week, the city building card game where you're saving your population from devastating disasters. It is going on for all out downtown devastation with this base game. Uh, cards where you are going to be obviously building said city, resource management of the city alongside of it, and then how can you improve as well as what's going to be happening. So a little bit of everything that you need to know here. Roll dice to see sort of like the Machi Koro-esque sort of thing spend it to upgrade and then invest in the improvements and then that's about all we see there that would it would have been nice to know a little bit more of what comes after that right now there is a rule book here that we can go over and click on and it tells you the other phases of the game after you collect your resources there are event cards that you can use you have to pay for your food for your population and then there's disaster rounds that are marked with lightning and highlighted in red and then one player will draw one of the disaster cards see what happens the nuke card should not be placed in the deck until the final round oh. <laughs> so anyway um and, and they tell you exactly how they interact so you're forced to lose a number of people based on potentially uh what's rolled as well so there you go uh let's see what the price point is on this 35 dollars for the base game 45 42 dollars for the stretch goals plus putting your name on the instruction manual um there you go that is adversity. Check it out. Next up is a noble war, but I'm thinking I'm going to do something funny here. Yeah. So between the time when I lost power and now the next day, they actually canceled, which is interesting. I'm not quite sure why. I mean, the 50% funded in the first day or so is not bad by any means. Obviously, they had different internal projections, but, I mean, they got $27,000, which, again, is nothing to sneeze at. It's a lot more than most projects that are not coming from a very big company. So, it, it is, you know, an asymmetric, it reminds me more of Dogs of War from the Simon campaign, in terms of the asymmetric factions in which you're battling out, and it's from Sea of Legends, maybe? I mean, I think that was a pretty big game. They got a couple hundred thousand dollars. Let's check that just a second. Yeah, five hundred thousand dollars. So if you're basing it off of that, and you were going off of that, well, then I guess this is kind of disappointing. Uh, two to four players manipulating courts of two kingdoms, earning prestige, and you're trying to manipulate both of these kingdoms, inserting the most influence that you can um, as sort of another party to try and ultimately win the game by whatever prestige you can. So 
again, it makes no difference, they say, as I just mentioned, whether your family sits on the throne or not. You are just wanting to make sure that your house is the highest rank, period. But you've got secrets. People are going to use them against you. Influence. I mean, you want, might want just want to check this one out just so you see, because obviously it's going to be relaunching. Although I think I saw on Board Game Geek already that it's relaunching now. I think they said now 2022. Let's see what the update actually says here. So project's canceled. We're entering it for now. Let's just see. Uh, we stumbled. We Okay. We didn't promote it. Execution. Fall short. Escape velocity. We didn't get enough money fast enough. So they're working on more stuff for Sea of Legends. And so maybe you'll see Sea of Legends between now and the end of the year. But they're going to redo this in 2022. Um, either way, if you're interested, check out the page e either way. So there you go. Now this is one that I did not see. Nersha. This is almost 50%, just over 50% actually funded. Uh, 12 board designs to play or make your own. Strategy and survival. Chill. Nice little dad pun there at the top. Okay, so what are we actually getting with this? I have no idea what this is. Uh, let's take a look. Okay. Abstract game, two player, jumping. Okay. Three of your pieces home before the rival does. When you bleed a piece home, one less on the board. So it's got sort of, uh, if you're familiar with the abstract yinch, which is one of my favorites that I'm absolutely atrocious at. I'm not sure I've ever won yinch, even though it's one of my favorite abstracts, where once you complete it, it takes it off the board for use. So it sort of is a balancing mechanic from that side of things. So what are you actually doing? Okay, it's a, it's a, it's abstract. So, okay, great, great, great. 12 maps to start with. Uh, your play pieces are not captured, jumped, or even touched by the other player. Okay, great. So how are we actually playing with all of these various symbols on the actual board? Movement, okay, orthogonally, no diagonal. Once you start to move, you must continue until you reach an edge, an obstacle. Um, we've seen that with a couple other abstracts must rest a turn after moving so you can't use the same one no jumping no capturing so you've got to get home right not your rival's home but your home all the map tiles so we have valleys home tiles mountain tiles block movement forest tiles stop but may go through lakes uh eat pieces removed from the rest of the game portal tiles okay so this is interesting you know what? I'll, I'll click remind me on this i'm a big fan of abstract and they give you, uh, you know, just the basic setup of this side of things. So that's what they're talking about when they have the 12 board designs and you can make it yourself. Um, that's interesting. I'm not sure I'd like it, but I think it's an interesting mental exercise, if nothing else. This one might be a little bit too analysis paralysis just based on all of the symbols. But, you know, let's see what the price point is out of curiosity. The deluxe version was that get a neoprene mat, capstone. Okay, cool. That's 59 bucks. The base game is 39 bucks. Okay. Fair enough. I don't know. Interesting abstract. We'll see if it funds. I've got to remind me, so I'll get the two day 48 hour bonus or <laughs> the two day 48 hour bonus. I'll get the two day 48 hour warning and check it out when it gets to that point and see where things are. Next up, No Escape Redemption, the Redemption Expansion Modular uh, Quadrilogy uh, that is going with the base game of No Escape. So let's take a look at this, another preview right at the top. What you're doing, if I recall from my discussion last week, is you have this map and you are building tile pieces and moving your character trying to escape and the first one to do so wins, but you are actively trying to sabotage other people's routes to their home base. So let's see, okay, print and play, redemption expansion box, which, you know, with a game like this, I guess you worry about replayability. So if this is your ilk, uh, having four different mini modules might actually be relatively appeasing. Mm, 68 US bucks for one expansion plus the base game. Both expansions in the base game is 88. I mean, I have no clue at this point if that's a good value. And a little bit of video and how you play. I think, like I said, the nuance I'm not seeing quite as prevalent on the page. Like what makes this game nuanced? I'm not seeing exactly how this game plays. So I'd like to see that. I mean, yes, you can grab the rule book that's on here and check it out. But what is the actual nuance of this game? If I'm new to this game, this page doesn't necessarily attract me as a, what am I doing? Like, why am I getting into this? What, what, what where are the mechanics? So I, I need more of that from that side of things. So there you go. If you saw that, that was the lights flickering with the generator. Let's go on to the next one. So last up, we have Route 66, the Mother Road. 
and uh, America's Main Street. Now, this is a six-in-one potential uh, Kickstarter, if you will. Three new Press Your Luck travel games. They talk about Eagle Griffin Games, the founders of Eagle Griffin Games, as the celebration that you're almost reaching was like 100 years of Route 66 going from L.A. to Chicago. Well, it's the 15th year of Eagle Griffin Games, so they went across and did the Route 66, and they inspired them to, you know, sort of, or at least influenced on this side of things for the game. And you can see uh, the one main game here, the uh, Mother's Road, where it's the whole Route 66, and then you have these smaller Press Your Luck games where you're trying to cover as many different areas as you can all in one. It's already funded. You can see the price point, I believe, is something like, what did they say, 49 bucks, 39 bucks. And I was glancing earlier. Uh, just this stuff, if you want, for $15, the smaller ones. And then the Mother Road for 30 Pretty in Pink. That gets you the expansion for the Mother Road. And then, yeah, 6 for 49 which includes a couple of these other uh, small games, like the original Roll and Write game uh, and Dead Man's Chest, another party game. So, I mean, that's basically the whole Kickstarter. They don't go into a lot of the detail of these individual games of the pressure luck or the race across Route 66 there, but they do a good job of illustrating it. And you can see that your mileage may vary and the get your kicks uh, in terms of the pressure luck side of things as you're going to be trying to visit as many of these places all in one. And they talk a little bit about the prices, as I said here, but then they've got all of the rule books as well. So if you're really interested in the race games and a little bit of pressure luck at a low cost point, and they say all of these are travel size too. So if you want to take them with you, obviously then as a travel game, traveling game there, you can do both. Um, that's about it. So there you go. Route 66. That's it. So there we go. Crowdfunding this week. Short, easy, to the point, you don't have to listen to me blab on for 20 or 30 extra minutes like usual. As always, the upcoming stuff for next week is going to be out there. I still have yet to do sort of a July roundup. I'm probably going to get to that at some point. I have like a stack of uh, four games sitting next to me here on the cushion to be able to start talking about, to get some reviews out hopefully next week or two. A couple more uh, short blurbs out there as well as, as I mentioned at the beginning, probably Board Games and Money Part 2. And we'll just kind of see whatever else comes up. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you backed. Let me know what you didn't back. I don't know. Whatever you want. And we'll talk about a little bit of uh, TV shows or whatever else is on the news and the notables uh, tomorrow as well. And hopefully I have power the next time we speak. Stay classy. Have a great weekend.